Thursday, November 8th, 2018. Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We remain standing for a prayer by Pastor Eric Shaw from Calvary Temple. Let's pray. So, Father, I bless your name, and I ask that you would bring your kingdom in this place, in this room, this building, most importantly, in our hearts. I ask for, for the provision of your wisdom and direction on how best to serve the people of this county. And God, I ask for your provision in all things. And, uh, Lord, we just ask uh, that you would look with forgiveness and mercy towards us as we do towards those around us. And Lord, we thank you, we bless you. Yours is the kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Pete. Well, before we get started, I'd like to um, welcome Steve Schaffner and congratulate him on his election. He, um, he's with us today. and. Look forward, appreciate you coming out today and uh, look forward to working with you and starting in January when you sit up here. I'll keep this seat warm for you. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I think you guys are aware out at the um, you know, landfill, we were approved to use that uh, uh, lime. Yeah, lime kiln dust as an alternative uh, daily cover uh, material. Uh, we've kind of moved on from that to be able to, we're now asking for used as a uh, intermediate cover as well. Uh, we have received temporary approval from the Ohio EPA on that. So essentially, we're going to go through test phase, see how it works, and go back after a period of time. Um, and then uh, uh, after, uh, you know, if we see that this is working well and how EPA approves it, we'll be able to use this as a, this, this, this will be a uh, permanent approval. Did they start hauling back again? They start what? Did they start? return to hauling the material back because they had stopped hauling the lime in for yeah a while. they have they're back yeah okay yep okay and it's at least under dave's weekly report that's what uh, he indicated as of last week so, so the pete out there at the landfill lingerie on the landfill they were having all kinds of problems with the trucks getting in and out with the where they had their floods out there basically oh, yeah. Have they taken care of that? As far as I know. I, I talked to Fred this morning. Yeah, it's it's uh it wasn't as bad as what he thought. So there uh it was just a we didn't have to buy the ones. A couple of small areas is all it was. I know he put on his report that there was several of the garbage trucks couldn't get in and out, they were getting stuck, so mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been taken care of. Yeah. What is this uh this for? That goes with the contract you already signed. That's one extra form they sent us. What is, what is it for? It's though? for a copier. Oh, okay. So I just need your signature on it. I'll stick it with the old contract. Thank you. Because Pete Fred asked about that excavator. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the email that came through for the 109000 I'll be honest with you, I didn't see it. Yeah. So I, I said before they get excited about that he's going to take one of the the excavator we got out there and reach up in because i said the excavator won't go it might reach out this way but it might not go up mm -hmm. so they're going to try it first okay. so and they, they make them with a long arm too so he's going to work he's, he said it's a good point we're going to figure that out okay um also you may be aware of that uh, uh sheriff had another Unfortunate uh, wrecked cruiser. And, uh, it, last I heard, it was it was going to be total frames bent. Going to need to replace it. Um, we will we will get some insurance proceeds out of it. Whose fault was it? Um, 
Oh, this I read in the paper. He overcorrected. Yeah. I don't think he was cited. But still. Uh, so the sheriff does want to replace that vehicle. So it's a matter of, you know, we're going to go ahead and do that and where we're going to take the money from. Our, our choices are pretty slim, either general fund or out of our capital improvements. It's like we, we did fund a couple of vehicles out of that the last couple of years. What's the, um, when you say a little bit of insurance, aren't we insured for that or are we self-insured? No, in we're insured for that. We'll only get the value of the vehicle. In other words, it's a five or six year old car with a hundred and some odd thousand miles. We'll is only that get what the, it was? We'll only get the market value. But is that what it was, an old one? Yeah. It was an older one. It was a Crown Vic. Oh, okay. Yeah. A real old one. Yeah. Yeah. So we won't. We won't. But again, uh, the value less our our deductible. So that won't leave us a whole lot of money. So we can't wait till next year when we buy. I want to order it now because it's such a long lead time before they before they actually come in. But you have to put the money in this year. Yeah. You? Yeah. To encumber it. Sure. So that's thirty thousand dollars. Thirty to thirty-five, something like that. Yeah. Why don't we see if he has it in his budget? Uh, well, as far as the, the vehicle line item, no, he doesn't have it. But can he take it from somewhere else, rather than take it out of ours? He turns back in a lot of money every year anyway. Some, some to some years, yes. Some years, no. Why don't you look at that? I can do that. Okay. Um, also. You should notice as you go through some of the, the bills, you know, ja Job and Family Services does kind of their own separate little docket. Uh, one uh, of, of note is the uh, monthly boarding cost that we got. Um, the bill that we got, or well, this month's fees are about half of what we have been averaging for the year. Seven. So all the work that the, you know, the Family Court and Job and Family Services and Public Defender and you know a few other agencies that they've been working together and to try to um, get these kids back reunited with their families is, is starting to pay off. That's where we hire the other public defender. Yeah. That helped move things through the court. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that was what seventy thousand less this month, fifty thousand. Oh, uh, on average, almost eighty thousand. Eighty thousand. Yep less yeah wow is this the first month that that's happened yeah it's the first I mean this is the first dramatic change we've seen <coughs> and is that monthly or quarterly that they give you that report let me get monthly so probably in a week or two when I get the next month one you, you'll see that yeah they've done a good job I mean this is what we asked them to do, and I think uh, AJ's done a good job uh, in his new role, and it mm -hmm. appears like things are working, and you know, we encourage them all to keep talking and keep working together, and exactly. the more they can streamline that process, it seems to be paying off. Yep. Uh, Let's keep an eye on that. Here's the money. I mean, I, I do know part of that is we have one really expensive kid that got emancipated, got something to do with that. Sure. But obviously not all well, we're going to have the ebbs and flows. Yeah, but uh, certainly it appears things are moving in the right direction. That's all I got, gentlemen. Okay, you're up. I think Pete took care of giving you your copies. Oops, okay. Almost. Just about. We almost forgot something very important. We have a, I was gonna, I was a brand ask. new shiny penny. Okay, all right. <laughs> Jay Blair is our new budget analyst. Hello. Hi. You may, some folks like Gary remembers our little red-haired girl who left us to go back to the private sector. But I replaced her. You're welcome. Thank you. 
Good luck. Thank you. Everyone have their packet? Onward. Okay. First page is where we analyze how Pete has done in his forecast over the years. Um, certainly, if you look in the first couple of years, um, how we predicted 2017 to turn out, it's, it's almost remarkable how year after year the accuracy is just spot on. You can't complain about it. You get out into you know three years or so, a lot of things can change. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, you know, a lot of people do forecasts. They'll do them, oh, we'll just take the budget and go from there and put numbers on it. Again, I will stress, this is not the budget. This is our actual cash flows, okay? Budget and cash flows are two different things, right? Uh, but it's important, I, I think, on our side that we make this, you know, as realistic as possible because the basis of this is, what we're going to plan our next year's budget based on. So if we see that, um, you know, things are going bad, then we're going to tighten down on the budget. If things are looking a little better, then maybe we can do more things that we wouldn't otherwise. So um, it's really just to try to spot some trends. And again, you know, as you go out in time, things can change. Um, but we try to make this as, as real as possible. So we've talked at length at this about this, but for those in attendance, why do you think revenues are flat or declining? What what's your thought basis there? Um, Remember, well, I, I we, can tell we used you. to get what three percent? Used to get maybe. Well, I mean, uh, those numbers kind of go all over the, all over the board, depending on what the economy is doing. Or what the roller coasters are doing. What the roller coasters are doing. Um, like to be honest with you, for uh, going forward, and like on the sales tax, I say it, but one of our uh, you know largest employers uh, for our, our tourism industry, uh, when they put in a new roller coaster, that sales tax seems to do better that year. So, which seems to be on pretty much every other year. Kind of, of course, that's kind of how I did like to say, say the sales tax. One year it's up a little, it's a little better. Next year it's not as good. Next year it's up a little better. Except for this year, the phenomena didn't go up, did it? No. Like we thought. Uh, and I will tell you, that, you know, and this maybe gets us well beyond just doing this analysis for variance, is, um, you know, one of the biggest threats that I see especially to our revenue streams, and again, we've got a really good history about this, is what happens down in Columbus. Uh, first, you can go back to, I want to pick up the year. Uh, it appears to be 2011. We pulled away our personal property tax income. Okay, that went away. That was a that was a fairly sizable chunk of money. Uh, the next thing that came along, and even started before that, we're right about that time, is uh, they pulled back on local government fund, revenue sharing. So, so they, you know, we lost a lot of money on that. Um, and then this past year was where they changed these uh, Medicaid, Medicaid managed care organizations and how they uh, did sales tax on the services that were provided to them. So Remove that. And how much did that cost us? $600,000. So you know, beyond, uh, you know, what the economy throws at us, there's just, you know, Columbus can throw us some real curveballs. Uh, so I, I actually see that as one of the biggest threats. Uh, you know, they always, uh, change around what percentages we get for uh, for indigent defense. Who knows, you know, maybe they pull that out next. Who knows? Soil and water. Didn't they, they do something? Well, they, yeah, they've lost funding over the years, which, again, puts pressure back on us to fund it at the local level. So, it's just, you know, 
some of my observations. Really, the first three pages gives you the information on how we analyze and how well we forecasted for the, uh, for the year that we just completed. It should be the fourth page in. It's going to say 2018, 2022. It's the uh, assumptions that we're looking at. It's, it's, a, it's a narrative page. It's words instead of numbers. A couple of things that are not part of the forecast are the, uh, when we had the sunset sales tax, that's not included in what we're looking at here today, uh, nor is the, uh, the impact from the sports park, <coughs> additional bed tax, and that little project out there on Cleveland Road. Yeah, that's just because of the way it is, we have to flow it to the general fund. Yeah. So we net that out. We talk about a few items that have influence on how we project our revenues. We've talked about those a little bit here. Early sales tax, real estate values, uh, property transfers. Um, one thing that Pete didn't bring up, that if you look at the details that are provided, the investment income. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, it goes from millions of dollars down to a couple hundred thousand dollars, and we're starting to climb again. Uh, it's great to have that money, but I don't know if it's something you want to build an army with. Mm -hmm. You can spend it, but one year it could be way up, and next year, who knows? Uh, Pete talked about the sales tax, and that item number two there, I think that's basically Columbus. Things fluctuate. They have a lot of influence over what happens here. Uh, the Nexus pipeline to everyone that, you know, you go out and drive in that part of the county, you see the project going on. It's going to start bringing in revenues, but it seems like the, uh, the experts are saying, yes, you're going to have some money, but, again, don't count on it long term. It'll probably get depreciated and reduce it. Uh, look, we're looking to use it for mainly for capital items. So. And that's been my comment to the townships who it, it's when they don't don't budget that into yeah. forever. You know, if you want to buy a new fire truck, great. Everyone has those types of expenses that you got to deal with, and that's, yeah. that money will help with that. We have a couple of uh, advances out there that were uh, we don't want to become grants. Uh, the metals and our health insurance trust were in need a couple of years back, and. So we've put that money in, and we're, we're taking it back. We're not going to take it back in a big gulp, but we do want it back. So that's factored into our revenue stream as well. Where, where did you say? Where, where's the Meadows at right now? What do they owe us? What do they owe? 790. 790? 90. 790. Mm -hmm. I think we're like getting back like ten to $13,000 a year. So if you go way back, though, Pete, we go back to, I don't know, eight years or nine years, when there are $2 million floating around in there somewhere. Um, I don't know if it was that much. As far as I think your cost allocations. Cost that allocation. Did. Yeah. That for some years, we didn't get anything on it. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions on the revenue side? Looking at the expenses, you know, we've got a lot of different departments and elected officials. Um, when, you, when you look into the numbers behind the forecast, not everybody's the same. Like Pete said, we're not just taking, we're going to raise everybody by 3%. He personalizes it, looks at what's happening. We, we know some departments every so often need to replace a van or a truck, and so that's added here, there. And you know, what, one of the things that we do is, say for like 18, well, we know somebody got budgeted for something one time, a, a capital item. What we do is go after the next year, like a 19 going forward, we pull all those number, numbers out of the individual departments, and we just have one number for capital allocations for the entire budget. 
That's one of the ways we do this. Yep. Again, that, that, that goes to whether you, your, um, your structure, if you will. In other words, can you operate on your, your day to day ex revenues? Can you operate day to day expenses plus a piece of, of capital that that's just always ongoing? You have to do it. It isn't always the same thing, but those items are already out there. So whether you got to put a roof on a building or you got to replace a, you know, an HVAC unit, uh, parking lots, I mean, it's not the same thing every year, but you're going to make those kind of expenses. So that, that's, that's what's referred to as structural balance. Uh, Health insurance, um, the, excuse me, I skipped over number two. Uh, salary increases and such in 18 was bonuses, one-time payments. There's one more coming. Um, we're leaving the door open, I guess, for salary adjustments, but that's all going to be part of how we work out our budget policies. Uh, we did not specifically build in a number for what the raises might be. <coughs> Health insurance, 2018 was a 0% increase for our premiums. 19 uh, is the same, although there are some cost increases because of some changes, uh, reactivating the, uh, the high deductible HSA employer contribution will affect the departments that have people that use that particular type of insurance. Not everyone is on the same plan. Open enrollment will work out those details. And, you know, like, for instance, in 18, we anticipated, you know, zero percent increase, but the reality has been so far the year's almost over, uh, actually a slight decrease. I think that's just because of the mix and how things turned out. Uh, workers comp, we're in a different program than we used to be in that prospective program. We have a payment this year. We're typically looking between 1.2, 1.3% of what we think next year's wages are going to be. So that's the fun part of trying to accurately predict what our wages are going to be the next year. We're not anticipating a hiring increase. Those things are, I'm sure, will come up, but it's not built into the forecast. Typical operating expenses, if you look at a lot of the departments over the forecast period, some are like a one and one and a half percent growth in a given year. Some of the higher ones are like three percent. Sometimes the smaller departments have a higher percentage, but <coughs> they're small budgets, uh, so percentage-wise, it may make it look bigger. Uh, we continue to use the uh, capital murder budget. Uh, knock on wood, it's been sitting there, but it's still going to be included in our. Pete talked earlier about uh, in his comments on the. Uh, Child custody costs. We're forecasting a million seven. Um, last year was our worst year. I think that at least in the last ten years or so, it was over a million eight. So, we have um, we don't build capital costs into the individual budgets, but there is, the commissioners do have a, an account. <coughs> that they've developed that they can address various capital needs and that's to be continued. Um, the allocation for capital from the Nexus project is around $700,000. So that's a, a nice bonus for that. Um, reserve funds are included. The uh, really um, no contingencies are built in, so we're not feathering our nest. That service for the office building has pretty much been taken care of. Um, we're starting to get back to where we want to build for that 27th pay period, which happens every so often. And 2027. There you go. It's almost like a slogan or a campaign mm -hmm. thing. You know? Something to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> I actually adjusted the number up a little bit and, and did the calculations out that to them and what it's going to cost us by then. So I had to actually move it up a little bit. 
Well, it's good to be prepared. Yeah. We don't need a big surprise in 27. Right. And, and again, with the Ed's, what you've got here on the conclusion, and over the, over the forecast period, general fund meets the definition of structural balance except for 2022. Okay. However, the later years indicated diminishing trends. So in other words, whatever little maybe surpluses we may generate, they're, they're declining as, we, as, as time goes out. As opposed to what would be better news would be to see that they weren't declining, they were going up over time. Not, we're not seeing that. So, I would again. Bottom line, <clears throat> we're not in the greatest position, and, it, and it, it's going to pay off to be cautious how we go moving forward. Yep. Okay. Usually, when we are wrapping this up, I'll go back and look at how we communicated this very issue over the last several years. And, and yes, it's not as rosy as it was. Go back. It's you know, we're never anticipating. Hey, we should go out and hire a bunch of people, or you know, give everybody big raises. But our well, the the first sheet you presented indicates that this forecast has been very accurate. You know that we haven't been selling bills of goods. You know we're no, no, something it, it, that we I, clearly take seriously yeah, in mean, our office. Yeah, and I've seen some people where I mean, I mean, we even get some projections from our uh, some of the offices around here. To me, it's either you know they're they're taking a, a very draconian viewpoint, uh, or they're looking at life through rose-colored glasses. And I don't. We don't want this to be either way, either one of those. We want it to be right in the middle. Want it to be accurate. Mm -hmm. Pete, what's the uh, payment on the bond issue yearly for the office building? Um, that was roughly about four hundred thousand. Officially, the bonds will be. Retired next year. So we'll own the building. Free and clear. Free and clear. <laughs> yep. Right. Exactly. Okay. Good. Thank uh, you. I mean, we don't have to go through all the detail. I think, you know, this, this graph kind of shows you where we're at. And, I mean, obviously, uh, we're looking at the very, you know, to the right of this, the end of that. And, uh, not that it shows a big dip down in the later years, but I mean it is heading that direction. So it's it's just essentially it goes up a little bit and then it's coming back down again. Yeah. So it's, it's not like we're seeing, hey, this is trending up like this. Well, okay. I appreciate the finance department putting this together for us and coming in today. Yeah. Thanks. So you've looked it over some more. If you got questions, give us a holler. Good Great. job. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you want to do our resolutions? I don't read those. Um, resolution of the Board of County Commissioners, Erie County, for the purpose of entering into an offsite preparedness grant agreement with the First Energy Nuclear Operating Company. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenandoah? Yes. Declaring certain Erie County equipment surplus and ordering same to be sold by internet auction. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. Authorizing the drawing of warrants. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenegal? Yes. Entering into an agreement with uh, strategic solutions. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Uh, authorizing the county auditor to make budget modifications and appropriations. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Uh, releasing funds collected pursuant to Ohio Revised Code. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Uh, declaring certain items surplus and ordering to be discarded or salvaged. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Authorizing the county auditor to make budget modifications and supplemental appropriations. Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenago? Yes. Uh, 
declaring certain Department of Environmental Services vehicle obsolete and authorizing same to be donated to the Erie Iowa International Airport. What kind of vehicle was that? Pete? It's a four-wheel drive pickup for the plow. Okay. Second. But it's older. I don't know. It says, I think, what year yeah, it is. Sorry. It should say in there. Yeah, I don't remember. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenandoah? Yes. And before we go into executive session, I'd like to we authorize the um, purchasing of the new scanners and the to uh, help scan our documents and, and get, move to more paperless um, situation up here. I want to thank uh, Carolyn, Shelley, Lori, Jackie, Aaron, and Alicia, and Tim Jonovich and IT for the work that they've done to get this process moving. I think it'll uh, increase efficiency, and I thank everybody for the work they've put in on that project. And if there's no public comment, then I'll make a motion. We go into executive session regarding pending litigation. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes. Yes. Move we adjourn? Second. Mr. Monahan? Yes. Mr. Old? Yes. Mr. Shenango? Yes.